been thinking lately of if I was to build a ghost hunting game, what elements would I take from the existing ghost hunting games to make the perfect game of this genre? Currently, Phasmophobia, by show of how many people are still playing it compared to others, in, is tops. But it has its flaws just like they all do. So what, what if we looked around and combined the best of these games into one? Let's go over the list. Best AI behaviors. Phasmophobia. Phas is the best game with this, with the AI behavior standpoint, where you can go in, do zero evidence gear, and still figure out the ghost. No other game comes closest to the behaviors or AI. Plus, with the with the way every like you have different types of behaviors for each ghost, some are set in stone, some are not set in stone, that it actually keeps you thinking about what if the ghost is doing this. Okay, that might lead you to think that it might be this ghost. Like, let's say you go into a room, the, the ghost never does anything. It's a shit, you know, it could be a shade. Could just be a quiet demon, but most likely it could be a shade. Right, best graphics, Demonologist. Probably one of the most gorgeous ghost hunting games out there. Who do they did it in Unreal 5? The look is just really good and it sets the mood so well. In the future, I see more of this genre coming out in Unreal 5 instead of Unity. And heck, I know of at least one game, Obsidio, that ported its Unity version over to Unreal 5 and is working on updating that. Best jump scares, Ghost Exile. Some really nice random jump scares in this game. They're not tied to any areas. All of their jump scares can happen any place in, the, in their houses. And it's still the only game right now that I can put that game aside for, for a couple of months, come back to it, and I know the game will make me jump at some point. All the other games, I mean, Faz makes me jump off and on, but for most time, a little bit, but not bad. Uh, Ghost Exile, though. I get in that game, and I know, okay, when is this going to make me have a heart attack? Best maps, Demonologist. They don't have the most, but what they do have, they look really good. And they also, at least the first three, uh, have hidden th basically have hidden Easter eggs in them that are fun to try to figure out. Unfortunately, it seems they have stopped putting in the Easter eggs. I want to say their last three maps have nothing. And so, yeah. And one, I think it was in their second house, was basically a joke on the pub on the public, which a lot of people wasted a lot of time on it. It's I'm it's the uh, but it's Mary's room or something like that. And yeah, that actually turned out to be nothing. That was just a red herring. And yeah, devs had fun. There was a lot of people that spent a lot of hours wasting on that. Uh, best looking gear, demonologist. Their gear looks their gear looks great, and it's a, and it's original. Not sure how it all would work in real life, especially the cockroach EMF, but it looks really good. Between the EMF, ESG, UV, having an easel for the ghost to draw on, the ectoplasm finder and such, it's just it's a nice fresh take on the gear, where all the other games look like regular ghost hunting gear. Like honestly, when I first saw the game and I saw the gear, I thought the gear. I thought the game was being was going to be more like Victorian, Victorian oriented ghost hunting in all their maps and all their games. And it just happens to be that that's what the gear looks like, but the rest of the game is pretty is modern. Okay, best looking ghost, Ghost Watchers. Ghost Watchers ghosts are so cool looking. Between the Baba Duke, uh, the Drowned, the Hangman. Um their ghosts look really good. Best exorcism, demonologist. It's fun. It's interactive. The in, and the endings for most are really cool looking. There's a couple that I think could have been better, uh, but as far as exercising the ghost, most of the houses have a really cool exorcism ending that I really love. Best leveling. This is a ghost. If you're looking for a game that is going to require you to keep playing to unlock all the cool stuff and give you hours of fun, this is uh, this is the game. Problem is, if it's not your favorite game then there are going to be a lot of things you were never going to look at because all of all of their really cool stuff, like all their new maps, all that kind of good stuff, are all behind uh, what they call hunter tokens. And some games you get hunter tokens, some games you don't get hunter tokens. And like every map is 20 hunter tokens. So best story, uh, by far, this isn't even close. Uh, by far, Conrad Stevenson's Paranormal PI. Uh, by far the best, hands down. Every location has a deep story. Every ghost in the area has a deep story. I'm including this though, it's not multiplayer. It is still a ghost hunting game. And uh, I know a lot of people who've had fun with this game. And But yeah, but the story part of it, and because it's not replayable, I mean, once you figure something out, it's done. I think is one reason why 
a lot of people didn't mess with this game or barely mess with this game, but just the story driven part. And I don't know how you could do this in a replayable type game other than if it was like an MMO or an RPG or something like that, that changed up. But yeah, there you go. Best logic puzzle. Phasmophobia. I thought about putting up studio here, but then thought about it and played up studio a little bit more. And I wasn't thinking in Obsidio, it was just more of paying attention and checking a mark. And that's not what this is. The logic puzzle is more of making you think. And I think by far Phasmophobia is the best at that. I think Demonologist has a chance that they change some things. Ghost Watchers, Ghost Watchers has a ch chance also of this. If they, once they add in the tier one and tier two behaviors, Basically, anything that's going to make you be able to go in the game, get zero, uh, do zero evidence, and figure out the ghosts by the logic puzzle part, just purely on their behaviors, is where this is at. Best base. Uh, this really is... It's kind of... I have Demonologist as the best base, but, but that's just because you get to choose a bunch of different types, depending on your type. So like I use a lighthouse. I know a lot of people use a bar. You can buy a penthouse. So I got, so I'm going to keep demonologist on here. But with that being said, ghost watchers are a really, really close second. Uh, the base itself is really cool looking, but down in the basement ha has basically um, not vaults, vats with each ghost, every ghost that you catch. Uh, that type goes into a vat. So like, I don't have like the top, the tier three and tier four ghosts. I've got all, I think I've got all the tier ones. I think I got most of the tier twos, but you can go down to the basement and see what they look like. It's really cool. Um, they've got some other things on their base that are really cool, but being able to go down the vats and just kind of look around and see and see all the different types of ghosts are, is really fun to do. So, combine all those elements together, and it would make a killer ghost hunting game that would, people would really, really love. And I know I would. I would be definitely playing it. But if you take the logic puzzle and AI behavior of Phasmophobia, the graphics, the exorcism, gear, base, and massive demonologist, jump scares of Ghost Exile, Ghosts of Ghost Watchers, the story of Conrad Stevenson, the leveling of This is a, this is a Ghost, the, the game would be killer. I mean, Unreal 5, just the, you know, really drawn out ghosts from the Ghost Watchers, you know, put in an RPG story storyline, like from Conrad Stevenson. And this game would be freaking amazing. Now, at least I believe it would be. But hey, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you really like the, my content, my memberships start at $1. And add your name at the end of the videos to show your support. And I also, oh, I also stream uh, Twitch and YouTube uh, every day, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, minus 5 GMT. And on Saturday and Sunday, I do 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, minus 5 GMT. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Peace.